Welcome to my How Does It Work series. Today's oxygen not included topic, sandbox mode. So if anybody has paid attention to my videos, you'll notice that most of them, or probably all of them, are done in sandbox mode. And this is because it allows me a nice clean work area without all the clutter of a normal base. So, how do you start your own sandbox mode for testing? Well, it's very simple. New game, survival, and then down here, game settings. There's a checkbox for sandbox mode. Use the X to get back out. Pick whatever asteroid and traits you want. Start it up. Now while that's loading, I'm going to pull up the wiki page. I highly recommend doing this. It is super duper helpful, very powerful. This activating debug menu part. Um, this gives you access to a lot of stuff. It basically allows your mouse cursor to turn into a dupe and do everything instantly. The dig command digs. It's gone. As soon as you say dig, it's gone. Deconstruct, gone. You don't have to wait for your dupes. None of that stuff. It works just like normal. It's just instantly done. On top of that, you can uh, assign skills, uh, spawn in dupes, and all sorts of other very powerful stuff. Um, but you don't have your research is instant. Your skills are instant. All sorts of stuff. Excellent, excellent stuff for testing quickly without having to go through the normal, regular process. Okay, you'll pick your name and your dupes and whatever. Uh, mine don't last very long. We'll get rid of them. Yep, begin. I get rid of these tutorial notifications too because they bother me. So, in the upper left is the sandbox button. You want to click that. That will unlock all these tools down here. I'm going to go ahead and pause as well. That will unlock all these down here. These are... Uh, your sandbox tools they're very 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 useful and the other thing we're going to do is do control plus F4 and turn on that instant mode now the actually I had it on so we'll, we'll turn it back on the only way to tell that it's on is really looking at stuff that you shouldn't have already so like in this case I don't have the ability to even research look at research tab or star map and you'll notice they're turning on and off also the overlays uh, that sort of stuff you can't really tell it's on or off the big thing about that is it disables your Steam achievements for that mode. So if I were to hop into a regular game right now with this enabled, it will disable my Steam achievements, near as I can tell, forever in that mode, unless you, say, have a mod that turns them back on. So, since it's hard to tell on and off, I highly recommend before you jump into your regular game that you exit to desktop and then go back in. Okay, so quickly, we'll go over what some of these buttons down here do. Um, reveal is awesome. Uh, before we get to reveal, this slider is going to be how big your uh, action is. So we'll make that 10. Reveal is awesome because there goes the darkness. You just hold down the left mouse button. I do this over the entire map whenever I first get my own sandbox. We're not going to do that right now, but I do. Destroy. Uh, again, with the big paintbrush thing, it just gets rid of everything. Now, you will have some stuff like muckroot and critter and stuff will fall through. At times, if you click again, it'll go away, or you can just delete some more stuff. Or, whenever you unpause, whenever it goes down here at the bottom, see we have muckroot, you can use clear floor. Clear floor gets rid of all sweepable debris and stuff on the floor. Super duper handy. Um, these also have their own uh, key bindings. I have rebound several or all of them, um, but you can find them in the options to see what the defaults are or mouse over it and it'll tell you. Spawn is how you get stuff in. Uh, you got food, you got dupes, plants, just about everything. Plants will do wild plants. Um, you'll, if you want farm plants, you have spawn seeds. Uh, all critters, babies, etc. Dupes are under special. You can also make comments and stuff. You want a dupe? There you go. There's a dupe. Dupes can be gotten rid of by destroy. Took in the printing pod and just about everything else. When you lose all your dupes, you get the colony loss message, and it'll pop this up. Just hit dismiss. It's not a big deal. Um, your sandbox mode can continue on perfectly fine, just this way without the dupes. You know, you only get that message once. Once this message is up here, it's not going to come back again. You can spawn a dupe and you want and delete them at your will without issue. Heat gun uh, uses the paintbrush. Go back big. Use the paintbrush, but uh, it will add or subtract degrees Kelvin, whatever you want. So, oops. 
So you can use this to make things uh, hotter, colder, whatever. I prefer to just change the temperature of the material um, via, like, say, the fill command here. But uh, you can absolutely use that if you want. Fill lets you put in whatever material you want into, let's do over here. So this is all oxygen with one tile of carbon dioxide. We fill it with this water. And now it's one tile of carbon dioxide, all water. So fill will do all of that material that you are currently on and replace it. So let's replace with chlorine gas. Now this is all water, right? We'll fill it. Now it's all chlorine gas. And then you let the game on pause and it will go back to working however is normal. So this oxalate created oxygen in our room with chlorine gas. So whenever you do the action, I like to do a pause um, <laughs> in case I say paint magma over the entire map or something. But uh, whenever you do it paused, it replaces whatever you click on. And then whenever you uh, unpause, you can see that the world goes back to normal and whatever. So it doesn't really, it's not like this is always chlorine or anything. The world is normal. You're just putting more in. You're just changing what's there. Brush is going to be the same way as fill, but um, it has the brush thing. I usually use brush at a, at a size one. I use it for changing individual tiles or making things like liquid locks. There's also a food poisoning thing if you care about that. Sprinkle I think is some kind of randomness. I never use that one. Sample is very cool. Uh, I completely forgot about it until I went to make this video. Boom. Algae. Uh, still on sample. Oxygen. Carbon dioxide. So it's good for copying. Oh, hey, I got this amount of water here. I want it over there. And you go into fill. So you sample it. Sample oxygen. There it is. Go to fill. It's the exact same oxygen. So if you've got two rooms that you want to go back and forth with. Sandbox mode also has the debug commands, which is enabled with backspace. I believe that's the default command. This is some form of the same things in sandbox here. I never use them. Uh, they're very similar, if not the same. If I, I, I like these, so I use these. But there are a couple nice features down here. These are all uh, drag and drop, like we would with assigning dig commands or destroy commands normally. So you have the destroy button, the deconstruct button, and the clear floor button. So you can clear floor all at once. Very convenient, very nice. The other nice thing is that you can zoom out and it's like screenshot mode normally where you can zoom out and see the entire map at the same time as well as the fog is gone so if we take it off see the fog we didn't reveal up here yet if we go back in turn this back on then the fog's off so that's something to keep in mind too if you ever need that this green button is a copy you can use it to copy stuff like say your geyser I'm sorry, it's not copy, it's a select. The red button is a deselect. Okay, so green adds the square, red doesn't. You can drag them or you can single click. Um, this one right here is copy. And whenever you do that, then you will paste exactly what you copied. See how it brought the hydrogen over and everything? Okay. Now, it's important to note that I believe the geyser that you copy is not the geyser that comes over. Now, it, it is a saltwater geyser, but if you had a good saltwater geyser, this one could be a poor saltwater geyser. I think as soon as you spawn it in, it determines good, bad, or whatever. It might even be based off a of position in the map, the quality of the geyser, or the, the specific specs. But that's super powerful, and if you want to, whenever you do this, you can type right here, give it a name, hit the Save button, and then these are mostly defaults, but yours will show up in here too. Like here's a test one, here's the printer pod and that sort of stuff. With the printing pod, um, I've noticed to get it to work a lot of times to allow me to like select dupes and stuff, I have to go back to the main menu and then come back in. But you can actually move your printing pod around, like say you're designing bases and your printing pods in your base, um, but you decided, oh, nope, I don't want it in that spot, I want another spot. You can do that with this, you can just spawn in a printing pod and stuff. If you use the green button, highlight it, save it, send it down here, and then here, 
thought. You just click. There it is. And apparently the one that I copied was on metal tiles. Oops. A uh, clear selection will get rid of those blocks around it. So the backspace, very powerful um, as well. I do not use it a whole bunch, but in the beginning, what I like to do is use the destroy. And destroy a large chunk of the map. Here, we'll unpause very, very, very fast. If we pause again and we assign a similar area to dig, look at the lag. You can see my FPS in the top left. Um, it's just not as not as nice whenever you dig it. Then you have all the debris to get rid of and such too. So, um, but this will not. I saw a geyser somewhere. Yeah, right in here. Whenever you dig, it won't get rid of your geysers. When you destroy, it will. So, uh, keep that in mind. Maybe the first couple times you go through, you want to grab all the geysers. You you want to dig and grab the geysers and stuff. And then, if you need a second sandbox map later, time maybe you destroy everything because it's faster. Just do it in chunks. If you're gonna clear, I like to clear out the whole map. If you're gonna do that, do it in chunks so you don't tank your computer because I've tried to do the whole map before and like say half of the map and my computer can't handle it. It'll go to one FPS and it'll crash. It's a decent computer so do chunks that your computer can handle. Once you have space then you can go ahead and you can do whatever you want for testing. Everything builds instantly. You don't need dupe interactions. You have access to all the materials. Sandbox mode does have additional materials that um, especially metals like mercury and electrum and I think there's pyrite, yeah. We, we don't have those in the game. They're, they are here for you to mess around with, I guess. Um, but just keep that in mind. Just because you see this as a material here doesn't necessarily mean it's in the game. But you can instantly build whatever you want. Um, if you want power, I suggest building steam turbine. Um, you can just simply paint steam it under it. Um, when you go to, let's get rid of this, Fog of War's back. Whenever you go to your fill command, up here in density, I just hold down the 9 button until it runs out. This will give you enough steam to run basically forever if you set it at the correct temperature. Temperature's in Kelvin, so make sure that you uh, either convert it or just spot check it. Paste whatever's default while paused see what temperature it is and then since since the conversions are just additive add your however many degrees to be at whatever temperature you want but uh, high density steam like this at 200 degrees bunch of steam turbines that'll give you power easily without needing a dupe to kick start it because everything else seems to need power of some nature to start the generator or to start the pump into the generator something like that so I like steam turbines after that, you you set up whatever you want, um, you know, liquid pump to pump in petroleum to petroleum generator, and anything of that, anything you want to experiment with, um, any of that stuff. So you want to build bases, you want to build uh, machines and all sorts of stuff here. This is the place to do it. You test, if something bad happens, it doesn't matter. You just delete the sour gas explosion or whatever you had go wrong. Try again, start over, doesn't matter perfectly fine. So sandbox mode is a very powerful tool. Uh, I use it all the time. I'm probably in here ten times more than I am in a base. Um, if you like experimenting with stuff like that, it is just like me, it is just amazing. If you just literally want to see if some idea you have for a, uh, a build works, um, perfectly fine to do that too. If you want to uh, say you're new and you want to play through this maybe with a little bit of cheating in case you you know you mess up and you you don't really want to restart but I, if that's how you'd like to play and you'd be like oh I feel like that guy shouldn't have died I made a mistake I'll just spawn in another one if that's how you want to play this is this is for you sandbox mode so very powerful a lot of stuff you can do um, the instant function the control left 4 is amazing works for mopping um, emptying pipes I suggest doing that while paused all sorts of stuff spawning whatever you want copy whatever you want um, you know build build the build over here one it over there copy move it around super powerful super fast excellent way to test things quickly much faster than playing a game and then of course safely so you do not ruin your entire save one last thing I forgot to mention, you can also turn on sandbox mode from an existing save. 
I suggest doing a save as, saving it as a different uh, name. And then whenever you are in that new save, then you can go under Options and then Game and there will be a checkbox to turn on sandbox mode. And what this will allow you to do is if you get to a point where you say, oh, I would like to try out this different build or something to that effect, um, but I would like my existing infrastructure here, I don't want to replicate it in sandbox, a separate sandbox map, you can save as, that way that you have a different map that is not going to mess up your achievements, it's not going to mess up your playthrough or anything, it's just a side one, a copy that then you can use to quickly test something and then load back into your original. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider getting subscribed. Also check out my other How Does It Work series videos. And if you have any questions on sandbox mode, please feel free to ask them down in the comments.